Shabbat Shalom. This is the darkest season of the year. The amount of daylight we experience each day will continue to decrease, leading up to the winter solstice later in December, the darkest day of the year when our hemisphere has its maximum tilt away from the sun. For so many of us, this is also among the most emotionally dark times we have ever experienced. For some, the two are connected, both seasonal affect and the stress of living in a pandemic. Especially now, as COVID-19 positivity rates surge in Illinois and across the Midwest, resulting in necessary mitigations to slow the steep rise in COVID-related hospitalizations, and curb the absolutely devastating daily increase in the number of Americans who are dying from the virus day after day. As we enter the darkest of months, the gloominess we typically feel in normal years as the temperatures cool and daylight decreases is compounded this year by the constraints, albeit necessary, on our daily lives. This week, we slid backwards into phase three of Restore Illinois, returning to where we were in the spring. Restaurant takeout, again, the struggle to find toilet paper on supermarket shelves. This time, it's not whether we can hug mom on Mother's Day, but similarly painful decisions about whether we can gather with our family on Thanksgiving after so many months of separation. This week in our Jewish calendar, we began a new month of Kislev. It's powerful to remember that Hebrew months begin with the new moon, not the illuminating brilliance of a full moon, but the point in the moon cycle when it is absent from the sky. Rosh Chodesh, the first day of the month, is the darkest day in the lunar cycle. Yet despite the darkness, it's customary to rejoice on this day, for Jewish tradition reminds us that life is generally chaotic, often dark and full of uncertainty, whether we like it or not. In fact, it's from darkness that everything is created. So Judaism urges us never to miss an opportunity to recognize all of the good things, and to rejoice over what we have. Certainly, it's easier to celebrate Rosh Chodesh Kislev than other Hebrew months, because this is the month when we celebrate the miracle of Hanukkah, a time for delicious fried treats and chocolate gelt, and my favorite, donuts. Jews and many of the world's faith communities turn to our festivals of light for comfort and hope in this darkest season. Our sages teach that it's incumbent upon each household to kindle the Hanukkah lights. Lighting one candle on the first night, and two on the second night, and three on the third, and so on, raising up each night of the festival in holiness. Doing what we can to increase the light all around us in what is otherwise a dark time. The Talmud tells of a celebration of light during this time of year, that would become Hanukkah. If you joined us online on Wednesday for our clergy and conversation, then you heard our team already discussing this important teaching from our tradition. When the first person, Adam, who was created in the beginning of the year on Rosh Hashanah, when Adam noticed that during the first three months of his life, the days were getting gradually shorter, he said, woe is to me, because I have sinned. The world around me is being darkened and is returning to its state of chaos and confusion. This must be the kind of death which has been sentenced to me from heaven. What did Adam do next? He took it upon himself to pray, to fast, to look within, and after eight days, he noticed the winter equinox, and he saw that indeed the days were beginning to lengthen again. So this is the way of the world, he thought, and he celebrated for eight days. For me, this midrash is particularly meaningful at this season. First, it's a reminder that even when the world is at its darkest, it will become light again not thanks to anything that any one of us does or doesn't do. But that's the natural order of things. This is the darkest period of the year, this year and every year. 
There is nothing we can do about that. But I'm also struck by Adam's response in this Talmud text, what I believe could be a model for each of us as we too navigate the darkness of this season. The text tells us that Adam took it upon himself to pray and fast and look within. Rather than remaining passive, Adam acts, taking important steps to reframe his reality. It's in his spiritual practice of first awareness and then prayer and introspection that Adam is able to muster the strength to continue on, even finding it in himself to rejoice and express gratitude for the blessings he was at first unable to see. Our tradition calls us time and again, instead of remaining in that place of fear and constraint, that dark place, as hard as it is at times, we can train ourselves to recognize the beauty of the world all around us and offer gratitude for our abounding blessings, not just in the darkness, but to cultivate a spiritual practice year round that reminds us to open ourselves to the wonders of the world, the big miracles and the small. As one modern Jewish thinker warns, our minds have ceased to, to be sensitive to the wonder Steeped in passionate anxiety to survive, we lose sight of what fate is, of what living is. And in darkness, we grope for solace, for meaning, and for prayer. But by cultivating these spiritual skills, we can better equip ourselves with the tools to maneuver our darkest days. If our tradition's many stories about Adam teach us anything, it is that humanity was created with agency and the ability to choose the narratives we employ as vehicles to bring darkness or light. In our Talmudic Midrash, Adam intuits this. Understanding the condition of the world around him is a reflection of his thoughts and his behavior. So he asserts himself in order to change the narrative, not necessarily change what is happening around him, but how he experiences it. As it is written, he noticed the winter equinox and saw that indeed the days were beginning to lengthen again. In greater awareness, Adam rejoiced. I pray that here in these darkest weeks of the year, we too might muster the strength and the courage to shine light on our many blessings rather than become paralyzed by the darkness of these days. Like Adam, we have incredible power to pivot our realities to that of light and gratitude reframing how we experience the world in which we live, shining light on the holiness and blessings that most certainly abound. Can you hear us so, and may our actions merit this coming truth. Shabbat Shalom.